just wanted to take our last opportunity this evening to help honor um, uh, some NMA members who have put the policy into action in our in our communities. Um, I'm not sure what's in the water in North Carolina, but we have two awardees this year for the James Whitaco Jr. MD Community Advocate Award. So I will um, recognize each separately. Um, our first um, awardee unfortunately could not make it here today. It's Dr. Karen Hargett from Old North State Medical Society. And um, I just wanted to be able to tell you a little bit about the work that Dr. Um, Hargett did. And obviously the pandemic provided, unfortunately, a lot of opportunity for work in our communities. Um, but when COVID-19 hit, Dr. Hargett actually had significant health challenges. And at the time she felt that she did not want her illness to define um, who she was as a person and the ability to be able to do something for society and for the greater good really motivated her and kept her positive through her own illness. Um, so her selfless actions um, helped o Old North State Medical Society in reducing the spread of COVID-19 in their community through education, through testing, and to, through increasing vaccine awareness. They had received a grant from the North Carolina General Assembly, which allowed them to partner with local community leaders, faith leaders, historically black colleges and universities, and community constituents to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 in their community. Um, I think something that was really also so important that Old North State did was they also understood that COVID-19 was impacting its own members financially. And many of their practitioners were really suffering during this time. And they reduced the dues of their society so that their practitioners could maintain membership. They could continue to be involved in educational webinars that were really important as they continue to, um, to learn about COVID and try to educate the community and maintain, um, uh, uh, maintain the information they needed to take best care of their patients. Um, they were able to provide COVID-19 testing for 8,000 individuals. They also distributed uh, nearly 6,000 food boxes to the food insecure because we know how, um, how food insecurity uh, was exacerbated by the pandemic. They were recognized and honored by the governor as one of the, in North Carolina, as one of the leading African-American organizations in health and medicine for their contributions to heal and care for the community. So even though she's not here today, we would really like to um, honor Dr. Hargett for her really triumph through her own illness and selflessness, the definition of selflessness in her um, advocacy in the community. Um, so she is one of the recipients of the James Whitaco, uh, Dr. James Whitaco Community Advocate Award. Um, and the characteristics of that awardee, I'm sorry, I didn't mention, someone who educates the community in regard to health and well being, who contributes to community health projects who makes significant contributions to service and mentoring and who's dedicated service to eliminating disparities in health among the minority, poor and underserved and disadvantaged communities. So we'll just, um, I think we have a, um, a message from Dr. Hart. Hello everyone, greetings to the National Medical Association. This is Dr. Karen Hargett. I'm a pediatrician out of Jacksonville, North Carolina. I want to thank the National Medical Association for this granting me this esteemed award after such a gracious and loved doctor loves his community and poured into his community. Um, I share the same love um, and feel strongly about my commitment 
to educating and provide being a resource to the community as far as accessibility, um, education, health, time, whatever it is that our communities may need. Um, to those who look like us and, and feel like they need someone that is in their corner or they, they feel like someone um, that's in their family that they can trust. Uh, this work trying to mitigate this deadly coronavirus is uh, pressing and difficult, but it's heartfelt and needs trusted faces in order for our community to benefit the most um, and to get the the treatments and um, the education that is needed in order for us to combat combat this deadly virus. So I hope I'm sowing the seeds of trust and family as I connect with each individual and family member on this journey. But I do humbly accept this award and I will continue, I promise to live up to its legacy. Um, thank you again from the bottom of my heart for this award and I hope I meet all of your expectations. Well, I think we can tell her she more than exceeded any expectation that we have of her. Next, um, I would like to present Dr. Johnny Lee Williams with the second uh, Whitaco Community Advocate Award this evening. And Dr. Williams is a native of North Carolina. He is a board certified OBGYN and also in addiction medicine. He's past president of Old, Old North State Medical Society. Um, he was president of the Johnny Littman Medical Society as well, and currently serves as the president of the Old North State Medical Foundation. Under his leadership, um, the, the Old North State Medical Foundation worked tirelessly as well in the community during the COVID pandemic. They also partnered with faith-based based organizations to facilitate COVID-19 screenings and testings and distribution of PPE. Um, they also distributed thousands of family food boxes um, for the food insecure individuals in their community. They screened and tested well nearly a half a million individuals, just outstanding, and had grassroots inter interactions that were instrumental in having individuals in the community become certified as contact tracers. And I, I think we know how important that was in the beginning of the pandemic. Um, with the approval of vaccines, they were instrumental in getting individuals vaccinated, but then realized that they came up against what we have all come up against, which was the, the lack of vaccine confidence. And they sort of pivoted in order to increase confidence in vaccine uptake. Um, they had social media campaigns to combat um, this uh, lack of confidence. They sponsored media forums through Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I think all of this was with virtually no funding. They really did this just out of the sheer desire to impact our community. So with that, and we're, we're fortunate that Dr. Williams is here. With that, I'd like to present the Whitaco Advocacy Award to Dr. Johnny Lee Williams. Thank you, Madam President. And I also want to thank my two young ladies for the SNMA that we know that we are in good hands. <laughs> First of all, uh, this was a shock because we do our work without any expectations of any credit or acclaim. acclaim. We, we, we don't work that way. But let me tell you a little something about our organization. As you know, events in Ferguson 
Missouri was in 2014. Our communities were, they were all, all over the country in turmoil. What we did in Eastern North Carolina, talked to a lot of the youth, faith-based, community-based organizations, and even law enforcement. They all wanted to do something. So what we did, we, we had at that time I was president of the state of uh, the Old North State Medical Society. We brought groups together from all over the state and uh, had buses brought youth in. And the youth ran these sessions. What can we do to prevent violence in the community and stay alive? At this particular Convention, we brought in judges uh, who give the sentences, police, but more importantly, about the youth. The youth, police, and the community based organization, things went so well. Was, Wait a minute, why is there any fighting? Everybody was like a love fest. It's in the real world, not exactly like that. So the youth carried out the convention, and everything went so well. But after that, they said, well, where do, where do we go from here? I said, where do you want to go from here? So the youth said, we want to continue this thing. So that was the foundation for forming the Old North State Medical Foundation. We asked a lot of the powers that be in our organization. They didn't want no parts of that. So we said, okay, we let the youth found it and we'll, found it and we'll work with them. So basically, the foundation is then, was then, and to be and supposedly now, a youth organization. And what we try to do is to work in the community with the youth, with families, to get a lot done. Well, this work, fine. We work with the Kempston teams. As you know, the youngest person ever to be on the North Carolina Crime Commission was one of the youth that worked with us, who's now city councilman. And I joke with him because he was the last, that was one of the last pictures I saw with the, with the FBI director Comey was with our youth on the New York Times. And as you know, Comey wasn't really a bad guy. But uh, they talk about what can we do to try to make things better. Well, anyway, in retrospect, we looked back and we said, Old North State Medical Foundation. And we looked in the archives and we found, wait, this is not totally new. Back in 1968, 1968, President Johnson, President NMA, President H.E.W., Mayor Washington, right here in D.C., and Hood President, Hood Secretary Weaver all got together and said, hey, you know what you found? Or what we did find, what they found, <laughs> the National Medical Association Foundation. Now we said, hey, we read the tenants and everything they were trying to do. They said, hey, this is the exact same thing we want to do. And guess what? We did it. We did it. The youth, the youth went all out to do things. I mean, that, I mean, they did medicine giveaways, over-the-counter medicine giveaways, food giveaways. And one of the most amazing things, as you know, our catchment area, we work primarily east of North Carolina. We're from the Virginia line to the South Carolina line, east of Highway 95. That's 34 counties. Guess what? That's a third of the state of North Carolina. We had no money, but we had a will and desire in these youth. So one of the first things they wanted to do, they bought the dance state of Harlem, the east of North Carolina. Guess what? With no money, because that don't mean they were free. And we got some, 
<laughs> the time is in the essence. But anyway, they came. But anyway, the pandemic came. The pandemic came. And we had no PPE. We had nothing. And it was affecting a whole lot of people in eastern North Carolina. So what we did, and you might have seen some of our pictures, we took rain suits, fire department equipment, and we went out and did testing and screening and all that. And as she alluded to earlier, we tested and screened. Well, first of all, we fed, had to feed the people. Anybody tell you feed and don't get people out, they're lying. We gave out, <laughs> we gave out with the help of Mount Carmel Helps and the food banks of the Central and Eastern North Carolina, 400, over 500,000 boxes of food. And our boxes was one to two weeks. We did screening and testing, almost half a million people. And then, I'm trying to, I know time is of the essence. So when the vaccine came, we tested and screened, and we were able to get at least 100,000 people to get at least one shot. And guess what? With no money. With no money. But one of the things that came about that really was unexpected. There were so many people had vaccine hesitancy. And a lot of them didn't have no clue what they were talking about. They said, no, no, no. I don't want you to give us what they gave us in Tuskegee. I said, that's not the problem. That's what they didn't give you in Tuskegee. <laughs> but anyway, we had to figure out how to get rid of vaccine hesitancy. And uh, we teamed with the Center for Black Health and Equity out of Durham, North Carolina. And there was a program. I, I want everybody in here, if you get a chance, look up the truth check. Let's Google it.org. Because that's, and I'm going to sit down after this, that's a, a mechanism where you don't tell a person what to do. You just tell them how they can find the truth. In other words, it's like, if I give you a fork, spoon, and a knife, I can give you that, but I can't tell you what to eat. Truth check is like that. So if you get a chance, please take the truth check training. It's only 15, 20 minutes. Only 15 or 20 minutes. If you do that, this will last for life. This will last for life. And a teacher person, is this real or not? You make that decision. But anyway, with all that being said, I want to thank the National American Association for this award <laughs> and uh, I, I appreciate everybody for being here and thank you very much. <laughs>